Aleluia. Hey, Aleluia. I was just seated there during the time of worship and saying something is going to come out of this kind of worship. Something is going to burst out because of this worship. Amen. Amen. Hey, it is going to come out of this kind of worship to the Lord. Aleluia. So today I want to share and from the I'm sorry I left my Bible and I came with the sometimes it is difficult. <laughs> but anyway, the sound room I'm sure they are ready to help us. Um, uh, the word that I want to share is from the book of Isaiah chapter 54. Our, our usual verse, but there is a part of the verse that the Lord gave me to share. Uh, and that is Isaiah 54 verse 1. And what the Lord gave me to share this morning is just those first Four, is it four, four, four words? Sing, O barren woman. That is that. Sing, O barren woman. I wanted us all to repeat. Sing, O barren woman. Say it. Sing, O barren woman. Say it again. Sing, O barren woman. And I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that the, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, singing, you can't spiritualize singing. Singing is singing. So don't say we are talking about singing. I'm talking about singing. Singing is singing. So I'm saying sing, O oh barren woman. Hallelujah. These days the Lord gave me a spirit of singing. It just fell upon him. Even when I'm at home, I just sing. I sing. And I want to challenge you this morning, brothers and sisters, sing, O oh barren woman. Yes, now we are going to look at what, what is the Holy Spirit saying? In the, by the way, this is a prophetic word. A prophetic word. To us as a church, but also to you as an individual. It is a prophetic word. So you better take it seriously. God is speaking to you. You can even put yourself there. Sing, O oh barren Naume. Sing, O oh barren whoever. Even the men. The word is sing, O oh barren woman. I want us to go back and understand barrenness. Barrenness was a kind of a desolation, of course. And uh, um, some of the things that I want you to take note of is that uh, God usually used figuratively women or a woman, when he referred to Israel. When he, even when he refers to the church, he calls the church the bride, the bride of Christ. And uh, when um, Paul was teaching in the book of Ephesians, when he was talking about marriage, he said, actually, I am speaking about Christ and the church. And he says the church is the bride of Christ. So many times God used women to figuratively talk about Israel. When Israel strayed, he would say you are like a woman who has prostituted and gone away from the Lord. And gone away from her husband, if I could put it that way. Sometimes he would say, as soon as Zion travailed, it brought forth. Now, travailing is for women. In the days of Hosea, the Lord said, go and marry this woman, a prostitute. And then she will leave you and she will go away. But you go and call her because I'm doing the same for Israel. I'm calling Israel back. Like a woman who has left her husband and just gone into prostitution, I'm calling her back. So women, we are a very, very good picture. I don't know, but the Lord used it again and again in the Old Testament, again in the New Testament, using women or a woman figuratively to represent Israel, to represent the church of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. But now we talk about barren. In the Bible, when you, especially in the Old Testament, though in the New Testament also, there were so many barren women. I wanted us to remember some. Is there anybody who remembers a barren woman whom you remember of in the Bible? Put up your hand. We are together. I want to see that we are awake. Yes, someone at the back there. Can you speak loudly? Hannah. Hannah, the mother of Samuel, was barren. Any other? Yes. 
Sarah, the wife of Abraham, the mother of Isaac was barren. Any other? Hey, they are finished, yes. Rachel, the mother of Joseph, was barren. Any other? Yes. Mrs. Manoah, some nameless woman, who was the mother of Samson, was barren. Any other? Yes. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, the, the, the wife of the priest Zechariah, was barren. Have we left out any other? Ruth and Opa, they married their husbands. They never had children until their husbands died. They were barren. At least for that time they were barren. Yes, thank you. Yes. Rebecca, the wife of and the mother of Jacob and Esau. She was barren. Maybe we finished. So there might be still others. I do not know whether I've forgotten. But the Shunammite woman was barren until they met with Elisha. And Elisha, there was a miracle that took place. I want to just picture barrenness, barrenness. How devastating barrenness could be. In those days, barrenness, as we know, even in these days, even in our African culture, barrenness, if you talk of barrenness, it is tears, it is crying, it is desolation, it is leaving home, it is being despised, it is endless prayers, you are praying, you are interceding. But let me tell you, there is something seemingly common among all these women who were barren. What is the common factor? That at least, okay, most common among them. Most common among them. Yes. Hey, let me get the other one since you had already talked. Yes. They love children very much, though they don't have them. That, that definitely is a, was a common thing. Any other common thing? Yes, Aunt Margaret. They prayed. Yes, they prayed a lot. Thank you very much. That is true. Yes. The children they gave birth to were covenant children. Not just covenant children, but they seemed to change the world in their time. So I wanted to tell you that beneath that barrenness, there is something great. There is something, something great. Behind the, behind the tears, behind the so much praying, behind, behind all that, there is something great. Something great hidden there. Praise the Lord. And I want to say, the prophetic word for us now is sing, O barren. It is not cry, O barren. It is not, it is not weep, O barren. It is sing, O barren. Someone can give their water. I don't know whether it's what I feel. My, my, my heart is dry. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. And, and let me tell you, brethren, a prophetic word is very important. Very, very important. In those days, there, there are things which, which are normal. You see, a barren woman, of course, when you look even in the face, you just say, that is the barren woman. You see the way they are talking, you just say, ah, that one is a barren woman. The way they are whispering, they, they don't have self-confidence. They don't have self-esteem. They, they want to retreat and go behind. Because it is like they have nothing to talk about. Other people have a lot to talk about, but for them they have nothing to talk about. That is barrenness. Desolation. And the Lord used to talk about the desolate land. The barren land. I want you to first of all picture that. And then God is saying, sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. I want us to go to the book of, uh, the book of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 62.
Isaiah 62, it says, verse 4, You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate, but you shall be called Hephiziba, and your land Beulah, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. Praise the Lord. There is something about changing Changing the attitude to what God wants you to look at a situation like. God was talking about the land of Israel. By the way, by that time that Isaiah was prophesying, prophesied about the, the exile of the children of Israel to, the, to Babylon and the rest of it. Then, of course, the land was left and the land became barren and the land grew thickets and bushes and, you know, some kind of wild trees and wild beasts. And it was a desolate land, a desolate land. And God was saying, now, that time that, you know, you had to leave. But now I am saying, now the Lord is saying, you shall no longer be termed forsaken. You shall not be called anymore desolate. Amen. But you shall be called Hephiziba, and your land Beula, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. Let me tell you, there are barren situations in people's lives. Barren situations. I, sometimes they are numerous and of all kinds. Sometimes it is barrenness in a family. Not physical, but a certain barrenness. Maybe it is an attack on a husband. Maybe it is an attack on children. Maybe it is generally the family. It could be a job. It could be a business. It could be a physical land that God has given you. And that land never produces anything. But, and yet it is your inheritance. And you know, you look at it, the natural way to react, you know what it is? Is to forsake, to forget, to just say, ah, ah, this one, I know it is my land, but I don't think I want even to look at it again. I'm even wondering whether it is from the Lord. I wonder whether it is from the Lord. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, God is saying we have to change our attitude toward that kind of barren situation. He is saying, don't forsake it. Don't forsake it. Don't call it desolate. Don't Rather, delight in it. Delight, delight. The other Sandra was talking about delight. That delight is more than happiness. We used to learn when we were doing MBA that when you are to delight a customer, it is beyond making a customer happy. You make a customer get excited and he feels, I must come back to this place. And God is saying, that barren place in your life, that barren something, delight in it. Delight in it. Don't call it desolate. Don't call it forsaken. Love it. Marry it. Can you imagine? God is saying, you shall no longer be termed forsaken. Nor shall your land any more be termed desolate. You shall not, but you shall be called heavy zipper. And your land beula. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is not talking about old love of these husbands and wives who have married a long time ago. And now even when he says sweetheart, you, it has no feeling attached to it. It is just like a name. He's talking about a bridegroom and a bride. That fresh new love. He's saying that desolate situation in your life. Begin to delight in it. Begin to love it. Begin to sing for it. Sing, O oh barren. Sing, O oh barren. I'm not talking about spiritual singing. I'm talking about real singing. Sing to the situation. Hallelujah. Sing, O oh barren. Can you say it again? Sing, O oh barren. My brothers and sisters, I want to challenge us that let's change around. Let's change things around. God is saying naturally, you should be crying. 
Naturally, you should be saying how unfortunate. Naturally, you would be saying, hey, the devil really visited us. I don't know, but certainly this time he came. Uh, the, 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 you would be saying, this land, this my inheritance, I don't know whether it is from God. But let me tell you, God is saying, change things around. That which you want forsake and put aside, embrace it, pick it up. Don't call it forsaken. Don't call it desolate. Marry it. Love it. Not love it with, 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 with you know, this kind of, you love it and uh, you just say, well, it is mine. What can I do? It is my situation. God is saying, I want an excitement. I want an excitement as you respond to this barren land. I am not talking about uh, this kind of singing. You, do you know that mourners also sing? In the book, I think of Lamentations, or Lamentations of Jeremiah, they talk about hiring mourners. They hire mourners and they tie themselves with something around their waist. And they actually do what? Sing a mourner's song. We are not talking about that. We are talking as, about a song in the chambers of the bridegroom. That's what we are talking about. A song in the chambers of the bridegroom. I, I pray that you perceive what God is saying in our times now. God is saying, sing, O barren. Sing to the situation that is barren. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to sing to the situations that are barren, brethren. Last week, I, was, I, I went for a retreat in Ginger. There was a, you know, a retreat with uh, some group of Christians with whom we associate. And uh, it was a beautiful place, just at the source of the Nile, but the other side, not the other one, which is very well built, but the other side, source of the Nile. And the person who owned it is one of our group. And so he invited us and we were going for a retreat for prayer. Beautiful place. But then he was giving us a history. He was saying, when I, when I, I want to give you, he, want, he wanted to tell us the history of how he came to that place. He said some years back, someone rang him and told him, there is this place. Why don't you buy it? And he said, no. It has never come to my mind. Uh, and for him, you are saying, God even didn't show it to me because he's a Christian. And he said, so no. I'm not, I'm not even coming to see it and I'm not going to buy it. So the other man kept quiet. He talked the same thing about three times. And he said, come. I don't know, but I just feel you are the person. Why don't you come and buy the land? He said, no, I will not come. It, 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 that is not my type of work, my type of thing. I am not coming. So you, you look for other people. It is okay you look for other people. Me, I don't want. By the third time, he even removed the, the number. He had the number of that person who was calling in his phone. He even removed it. And he left it. And so for some years, he, he was not even thinking about it. Then he went to the States. He was going for some Christian conference. Then a certain man, a certain American man, called him and said, I have a prophetic word for you. He said, yes. He said, I see there is a, an important river in your country. And I see you possessing a place near that river. And you can imagine he opened his mouth. He couldn't believe it. He kept quiet and now he went to look for the other person. He, had, he didn't even have the phone. He tried to look around and look around, eventually, he got the person. And he told him, I want to see the land. He went there. The land was overgrown. With bushes, with some funny wild trees. And of course, there were these, the, the usual animals and what. He just looked at it. It was because of the prophetic word. Had it not been for the prophetic word, he would have said, no, really, I don't know. But I don't think God is really telling me to do this. So he began. He said, if God has given it to me, let me begin the work. So he began the work. It was not easy at all. At one point, because he said, I didn't have enough money. And he kept trying and he kept trying. And then later on, even he would put workers. Workers would run away. One time the Lord told him, don't send workers. Go there and work with the workers. Be there. Be there. 
just be there and work together. Even when they are handling some tools, you also handle some tools and work together with them. So he began to work together with them. What he described, what it was and what it is now, now it is pure gold. Pure gold. I wanted, and, and it was such a big challenge because, you know, God speaks figuratively. He speaks in pictures. God is saying that that barren place of yours, that barren family, that barren, barren whatever, God is saying there is gold. There is gold. And I want you to try and picture, if possible, I think Gloria is the one who said, close your eyes and imagine a world without women. For me, I would say, close your eyes and try to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Which is that barren, desolate inheritance of yours, which you have been turning, forsaken, desolate, and you are even giving it up. Maybe it is your studies. Maybe it is something. But close your eyes and say, what is that desolate inheritance? What is that barren place that God is speaking to me about? And he's saying, underneath the thickets, the rubble, the, 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 the desolation, the wild beasts in it, demons and all whatever. Underneath there is pure gold. There is pure gold. But you will not get it unless you change your mind. You have to change your mind. Change your mind. Stop forsaking it. Sometimes we don't forsake but we ignore. You just ignore. Even when they talk about it, you say, yeah, 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 I have heard. But, but not that one. Maybe the other one, but not that one. You ignore. You are kind of passive about it. But God is saying that barren inheritance. God is saying, I want you to go and marry it. Marry. Do we all understand marrying? Do we understand fresh love? Not old love, fresh love, excitement. I want you to be excited about that inheritance. I want you to be excited. I want you to sing. I want you to rejoice. I want you to go and sing prophetically about that land. And begin to make declarations. And you begin to speak to East in a song. And you tell it, you think you are dissolute. You are married now. You think you are barren. You are fruitful now. You think you are sick. You are healed now. You think, you think demons are here. No, the pl- there is deliverance in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, we need to respond to prophetic words. You can't say that I just heard. You have to respond and in a practical way. You have to speak positively. In this particular way, in this particular situation, God is saying, sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. And I'm not talking about singing here in church. No. That is part of it. People, we have locked miracles in the church and they are not here even. Because we think miracles, miracles can only happen here. No. Even in your village, if that is the inheritance God has given you, you can go and sing to that inheritance and sing to it and tell it barren, barren land. I am marrying you. I am, mar- I am marrying you. You are becoming a darling. You are becoming a sweetheart. I am singing to you a song. You are no longer going to be barren. You are not going to be desolate. You are going to be fruitful. You are going to be fruitful. You are going to be married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing, O oh barren. Sing, O oh barren. Sing, O oh barren woman. Hey, me, I shout. I even dance for the Lord. And I want you to go and dance at home and sing at home. Hey, me, I do. I go into my bedroom and I just dance and I say, Lord, this, is, this dance is for you. It is for you. Nobody is around to see it, but it is for you. It is for you because you are wonderful. It is for you because there is no one like you. It is for you because you have loved me. I just sing. Hey, I just sing. 
And I sing and I say, Lord, nobody is here. You are the only one who is here. So let me just sing for you. Let me just dance for you. You are so wonderful. Nobody can compare with you, Lord. Brethren, dancing is not here in the church. Go to your inheritance and dance for it. And sing for it. And say, the Lord says, I sing for you, barren land. I sing for you. I speak to you. I pronounce to you. I say to you, you barren land, you are going to be fruitful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sing over it. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing over it. Amen. Sing over barren land. Oh, sing, oh, barren woman. Sing, oh, barren woman. Sing to your situation. Sing to that situation. It will turn around. It will, it will just have no choice. It will turn around. Because this is a prophetic word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sing, oh, barren woman. As a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. My goodness. Yeah? Have you ever seen people who are in love and they are rejoicing over each other? Hey, that's what, You see, these pictures that the Lord brings, and even the Lord Jesus Christ taught figuratively. He used it to bring a picture, and people would understand it better. He would put a picture and people would begin to imagine. I saw I went out so. Hey, oh yeah, these ones, we already see them going out so. And some seed fell on the road. Yeah, of course, some seed falls on the road. And, and people would just listen. And then when they perceive what he's saying, they say, hey, this is powerful. May the Lord give you a perceiving heart. May the Holy Spirit reveal this thing to you of sing, oh barren woman. Marry the land. Marry your workplace. Marry your family. Marry again your husband if it's impossible. Marry your children. Marry them. Marry them. Have a passion. Have a desire. Have, you know, put feeling into it. Eh. Because you see God said a bridegroom and a bride. Is there a bridegroom and a bride who don't have feeling? They are not there. But some of us, when we are coming to the things of God, we don't want to put feeling into it. We want to feel like uh, some kind of dignified. I am I'm kind of dignified. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't put feeling in those things. Hey, and yet when, eh, when uh, Arsenal is, uh, is hitting the goal, you even jump and say, eh. but when it comes to the things of God, we are dignified. We don't put feeling into those things. Brethren, the Lord is saying, sing, oh, barren woman. Sing, rejoice, dance before the Lord. Dance over your barren inheritance. Ba dance, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ah, let us look at some other verses. Let me tell you, people dance for the Lord. The other day I was thinking about Miriam. The Bible says, Miriam and the women, they took a tambourine and they began to dance for the Lord. You listen to the words they said. Let's go to Exodus 15. Is it Exodus 15? Yes. Exodus 15. Don't dance on today, dance tomorrow. Dance on Tuesday. Dance on Wednesday, on Thursday. Dance for the, dance over your barrenness. Hey, Amen. we are saying it as it is. We are not putting anything around it. Go and dance and sing over your barrenness. Exodus 15. Hey, then Moses and the children of Israel. I think it is 14 where they talk about, uh, about uh, Miriam picking the what? Has someone found it? I think it is 14. Is it 14? Oh, I think I heard it. Exodus 15.20, I think, yeah. 15.20. It says, so it... Hmm? 15.20. Oh, yes. Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Hey! They went after her, and they were with timbrels and dancing before the Lord. 
They were singing a new song to the Lord. How long ago did you begin to sing for the Lord? And sing a new song to the Lord. And dance for the Lord. The other song I was telling you, put on your dancing shoes. And dance for the Lord. Hey, if these shoes are inconveniencing, you remove them. Put them aside. And dance for the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm talking about not a spiritual dance. I'm talking about dancing. Hey, dancing. That is the one I'm talking about. They, they no more one. They no more dancing for the Lord. Hallelujah. That was... Miriam. Miriam was a prophetess. Miriam was no small person. Yeah, he wasn't. It is like seeing the, 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 the first family. That was like the first family. Miriam, the sister of who? Of Moses, a prophetess. She was no small individual. But she took a timbre and she began to dance for the Lord. Some of us, we think we are, we are too important. Can't dance for the Lord. No. Miriam was a prophetess and she danced for the Lord. I want to tell you, there is going to be something that will happen to that dissolute inheritance if you begin to sing over it and dance over it. Amen. Then there was uh, Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 16. Second Samuel chapter 6. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Mitchell, Saul's daughter, David's wife, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent, which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the, in the, name of the Lord of hosts and distributed among all the people the whole multitude of Israel, both to men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed each to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And his wife Mitchell, daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious! was the king of Israel today, who stripped himself of his kingly robes and uncovered himself in the eyes of his servant maids as one of those worthless fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. David said to Mitchell, it was before the Lord. It was before who? Before the Lord. It was before the Lord. If you come here, and you dance and it is before the Lord. It is all right. Before the Lord. It is okay. Who chose me above your father? And all his house to appoint me as prince over Israel. The people of the Lord. Therefore will I make merry. Eh? I will make what? Merry. In fact in Amplified they say in pure enjoyment. Some of you you dance you don't even enjoy. Who enjoy it? He dance to the Lord and enjoy it. Hey, in pure enjoyment before the Lord. I will be still more lightly esteemed than this. And will humble and lower myself in my own sight and yours. But by the means you mentioned, I will be held in honor. Hallelujah. David is saying, it is okay. It is okay to go down. I will still be more lightly esteemed than this. Even if before you I look like I'm foolish, I'm stupid, I'm so low. By the way, it is those who go low who come up. If I lie on the ground, is there any ground further than the ground? I can't go down beyond. The only way is to rise up. Yes. So if you are lower, there is no other way. That nothing will happen to you except for you to rise. Hallelujah. So David said, it is all right. Let me lower myself. Let me be down there. It is okay. It is okay. And the Bible says, far he be it from me. He who honors me, I will honor. Eh, and that is the word of the Lord. He who honors me, I will, I will honor. So it is okay to be humbled. It is okay to go down, down, down. Eh, even to the dust. One time I was listening to, to the late Derek Prince and he was saying 
that we, we, they had, I think, a retreat. And he said, we would lie flat on the ground. I almost began to know the smell of the carpet because my face was down on the ground before the Lord. And those are no mean people. Those are no small Those are powerful, powerful people. But they lowered themselves. They put themselves down. Let me tell you, David said, I will throw the clothes if I throw them. I will throw my leg if I throw it. But I will do it before? Before the Lord. Before the Lord. The Lord is saying, sing, oh, barren. I am saying, don't cry, but sing. Don't desert your inheritance, but sing over it. Don't turn away and call it for a second. Sing over it. Sing. I say sing. Sing and dance over your barren inheritance. Sing. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now, let's look at some other people. You know the children of Israel... They got an inheritance. And when God was announcing the inheritance, he said, I went out to search out a land, and I got a land flowing with milk and honey. They said, wonderful. Let's walk to the land which flows with milk and honey. When they sent spies, spies said, eh. <clears throat> the enemies, their cities, they are up to the heavens. And they are giants. And it, so the inheritance which was supposed to be the land flowing with milk and honey. Do you know how these people reacted? They reacted like what we are reading in the book of Isaiah 62. Instead of, like the Lord was saying, don't call it forsaken. For them, they said, let's forsake it. Don't call it this. They said, for us, we call it this. And we are even turning back. And God said, it is all right. It is okay. You are going to wander in the wilderness and wander until you die. Until you die. Do you know that there are many of us who are going to wander? We keep rotating like this. The year ends, you are rotating. Another year comes, you are rotating. When you look behind, you say, last year, eh, last year was like the other year. And actually, the other year was like the other year. Because the Lord has left you, said, okay, you wander. Keep wandering, keep rotating around until your life is finished and you get out of the way. Fruitless. Fruitless, just wandering around. Fruitless and just doing what? Wandering around. By the way, it could be your barren land may be your ministry. Nothing ever changes about your ministry. You know you have a calling on you about something, but it is a barren. It is like hard ground. And you keep wondering on it like this. Last year was like the other year, the other year was like the other year, the other. Until they bury you and they say, Amazi Mirimoji. Which Mirimoji has he finished? Which, which Mirimo? Nothing. You have just been wondering and wondering and wondering. And then you get out of the way. Brethren, the Bible says, sing, O barren. Begin to make pronouncements over the barren land. Begin to make declarations, positive declarations. Call to existence. You know, the Bible says, call those things that do not exist as though they did, as though they are. Begin to make pronouncements, begin to rejoice, begin to sing, begin to be passionate, like a bridegroom is passionate over the bride. Be passionate. If it is something that you have been barren, it might be even in your body. Barren. It is there. It, has, it, has, it is like it, it possessed a part of your body and it is possessing your inheritance. It is just there. It stood there and it says, this part is mine. Hmm? I've got it. Rejoice over your inheritance and tell it that it is no longer desolate. That you should come and occupy it. You are getting out. You are getting out. This is not a desolate land. It is a married land. I've already married it. I'm the bridegroom. I have married the land. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, there was people like Caleb. 
Caleb, for him, he demanded his inheritance. He said, I demand that I get my inheritance. Do you know that certain things, when you don't demand them, they will not come? For him, he said, eh, I have the word of the Lord. The Lord told me that that mountain will be mine. It is many years ago, 45, 40 years ago, but I am ready to take it now. Don't let age deter you from taking your inheritance. Eh, eh, no. Take your inheritance. Demand. Demand that me, my inheritance, I have to get it. Do you know that if he kept quiet, he wouldn't have got it? If he just said, well, anyway, these days I'm so old. 80, 80, 80. He was 80 years. 80 years. Now 80 years again to go back to war. Eh. How do you go back to war 80 years? Do you know that you can sit there because you have been looking at your inheritance and it is not improving? No fruit, nothing. Day in, day out, no. And then you begin to say, well, I think it will be my son who will, who will help me with my inheritance. For me, or oh, I think maybe my other uncle, he's my neighbor. When I'm out of the way, he'll come and take over my place. I think for me, I'm now, the years are gone. The years are gone. Not so with Caleb. Caleb demanded. He said, whatever age, give me. Give me my knee. Give me my inheritance. I want it. I'm ready for it. I'm ready. And I know the mountain. I know it very well because it has giants. I know it. There are giants there. But I'm ready for it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. People, you need to say that I'm ready. Hey, some of you, the devil will take your inheritance. And he will tell you, hey, others we are meant to have, but not you. Oh, you are not supposed to get this. Tell the devil, I demand my inheritance. I demand it. I demand that I have what belongs to me. By the prophetic word of the Lord, I am supposed to have this and I will have it. Whatever it takes, let it take, but I will have it. But the first step I'm going to do, I'm going to sing over my barren inheritance. I'm going to sing and dance. I'm going to declare the prophecy that the Lord spoke. I'm going to say, yes, you have giants, but the giants are living. Eh, hey, they are going. Eh, hey, they are living. The giants are living. The when they are still there, but I'm, they are going. They are going. They are leaving the place because my God is mighty. Because he's the one who fights for me. They are going. They will go. They will go. They will disappear. Hallelujah. Sing, O oh barren woman. Sing to the desolate land. Sing to the barren land. Yes, sing and say, you are no longer desolate. You are married. You are no longer barren. You are fruitful. Hey, you are no longer. What people are seeing on the outside, that is not the truth. God has already worked. Hallelujah. Sing, O oh barren woman. Sing, O oh barren woman. Sing over your inheritance. Hey, sing, O oh barren woman. Hallelujah. Hey, it works. There are some women in the Bible. I don't know their father's name very well. I think they were daughters of Zalafedes. Then nobody who knows the pronunciation well. Eh? The Zelofe. Ah, I don't know how to pronounce it. But those of you who have been reading the Bible, you know those women. These women were born without a brother. Their father didn't have a boy, a man. So, naturally. You know those things naturally. If you are seated there, you are saying naturally. Eh, naturally, things are to follow that way. Naturally, you know the predictions are saying that. And the other people are saying that. And my family, they say that. Let me tell you, you will lose your inheritance. These women say, yeah, we know it. Our father didn't get a man. But we want our inheritance. We want it. We want it. They disturbed so much. And he almost had to go to God and say, what do we do with these women? God said, give them. Give them their inheritance. Hey, give them. 
If you are there depending on natural things, natural weather, you see the weather these days is not favorable. Naturally they are saying things are not going to work next year. Eh hey, now you are in heritage in fact is in a bad place. It is in a bad place. That one you expect nothing. There's nothing. Let me tell you you have to demand your inheritance. You have to be like those women. They said no. We shall have it. Yes, he didn't have a man but we shall have our inheritance. It is ours. It is not going to be passed on. I want to challenge you. This is a message from the Lord. This is a prophetic message to you. You better take it. If you don't want to take it, it is also all right. It is okay. Because God has a solution for those who don't want to take his word. He, he has a, a wilderness. Where they will just keep doing like this. Hey, he has. Everybody he has something for you. So if for you, you are not taking the prophetic word, he will just give you a wilderness to walk in like this. Every year you are walking, and then we shall one day bury you. Hey, we shall bury you. Hey. Hey. So we are saying, this is a prophetic message to you personally, to us as a church. The Bible is saying, sing over it. Sing over and woman. Sing over and woman. Hey, sing, sing, sing. Over and woman, sing. Sing over and woman. Oh, sing barren woman. Sing over your barren inheritance. Sing over your barrenness. Sing, oh barren. Hallelujah. I almost have nothing more to say. I'm just saying, take the word of the Lord. Amen. Go and lie down in your bed and be quiet. And just tell the Lord, I want to demand for my own inheritance. I want to demand for what is mine. Some things are physical, some are spiritual, some are ministry, some are people. They are supposed to be part of you. They are running away. Call them and say that I demand my inheritance. You are supposed to be here. You better settle down. The Lord is going to do a miracle. I'm going to sing over you until the miracle arrives. It is up to you, my brother, my sister. For me, I'm excited. I am excited.